going to be another one of those days. The air conditioning unit's going to be put in the work today. Mm-hmm. We'll put in a little overtime. Yeah, and check on your neighbor. It's going to be pretty hot. And speaking of that, yesterday, of course, my son and, and my nephew, my nephew's here visiting from Texas, yeah. and he's so much fun. I just love having him here. And uh, we have a blast together, and he's a little bit older than Mac. And he'll be a senior in high school, and Mac's 12. He'll be in sixth grade. But he's he's so sweet to Mac, and... Anyway, so he's like a big brother. And anyway, but the two of them truly have endless energy. Even when it's 97 degrees yeah. outside. Yesterday, they wanted to go play baseball, which okay. is where I pitch baseballs to Mac and Maxie. Like in his the name. heat? Outside. In the heat. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, of all days, like y'all pick the hottest day of the uh-huh. summer. Awesome. Let's go. And, um, we loaded up a cooler full of waters and Gatorades and all yeah. that. And we were out there, I don't know, hour and a half, two hours. Oh, you're a good mama. It was crazy. <laughs> and okay. after that, then they wanted to go swimming. I'm thinking, aren't y'all worn <laughs> Just exhausted. Out? And then, you know, here we are today. And I'm sure there's going to be more activities, but... Never, I know. What is that? I don't know, but we're, I'm past it for sure. <laughs> Tiff and I, were li- normally on Monday nights, we'd probably go try to play pickleball yeah. after she gets off work. And last night we're like, let's just go get ice cream instead. That we're getting old. Is amazing. Mm-hmm. The KLRC Morning Show with Mark and Christy. 90.9 KLRC. Ready for some good news? We are, too. Here's your positive difference story of the day. All right. So this is a pretty beautiful redemption story from the Olympics. Okay. Okay. Um, Brody Malone is one of the U.S. gymnastics guys. And on Saturday, and he's supposed to be like one of our best. And Saturday, just catastrophe. Uh-oh. One of his worst meets he's ever had. Oh, man. They said it was shocking, uncharacteristic. He even thought he had to apologize to his teammates afterwards. Um, he was on the high bar, which is like one of his high, best routines. Yeah. And completely missed the bar. And then just in it, the fall, like, ruined the score. Mm-hmm. So much so that he didn't even qualify to be able to do the individuals. So, came all the way. He's not even going to get a chance to compete for an individual medal. Man, the heartbreak in that. Yes, because you've done all that training. And on top of that, he had to come back from an injury. And I'll tell you about that here just in a minute. So, last night when they had the team competition, that was it for him. Because he's not going to be able to compete for the individuals. And he decided not to live in the past. He said, I was just going to go for it. And last night, he was back to himself. In a team final where the U.S. gymnastics team had no major mistakes. And for the first time since 2008, they got a medal. Wow. First medal since 2008. And it, a big part of it had to do with Brody Malone's resurgence. He uh, upped his score by more than four points than what he had done on Saturday night. And again, he's coming back from even a major injury in 2022. He suffered a catastrophic injury on a high bar dismount, the same Mm. routine that he had so many problems with on Saturday night. He fractured a bone, shredded his meniscus, had uh, two other major ligament injuries in his knee, literally took him over a year and a half to learn how to walk again and recoup. Less than a year ago, he had a post on social media with him and a huge brace and a crutch, and the caption just simply said, learning to walk round two. Wow. And then now he's in the Olympics. And it looks like everything fell apart on Saturday night. And last night, he helped lead his team to the first medal since 2008. Here's what he said. Sometimes you get down. He was talking about his recovery. You can get deterred. But it's his faith in God, he says, that got him through. He said, God literally got me through this. Mm. That's what he told Inside Gymnastics in an interview. He said, after my injury, it put things in perspective for me. You never know how bad you might want something until it's taken away from you. And that's what happened. But it's just bad. I've been trying to take it every day at a time and having a lot of gratitude and being grateful every day for what I've been given has helped push me back towards this point. It's hard not to be happy 
when you're just grateful for it. Mm. Hello. Mic drop. Yeah. That's that's the line. That's it, right? That's such a really good perspective. It's hard not to be happy when, when you're, you're grateful. just grateful yeah. for it. Mm. That is our positive difference story of the day. The KLRC Morning Show with Mark and Christy. 90.9 KLRC. Okay, Mark. So I had one of these moments with my two nephews and my son. Uh huh. And there were some other adults standing around, but I I was talking about my, one of my nephews having Riz. Riz. Okay. Do you know oh, what that is? Is that the charisma? Char- it's charisma. charisma. Okay. And my nephew Maxie, he has Riz. Okay. Yeah, I've he's, met him before. He's yeah. yeah. He, he's got this kind of calm coolness about him, and yep. And there's always he's going to be a senior in high school, and there's always you know girls trying to call him and all that kind of stuff. And so I'm like. Dude, you got a little charisma. Dude, you got Riz. But when I said that, uh-huh. when I said you got Riz, the three young people all turned to me and stared at me like, what are you doing? <laughs> and I was like, why? Why are y'all looking at me like that? And they're like, you can't say that. So they weren't arguing that he doesn't have charisma. They were saying you can't use that word. Yes. My other nephew said, you can't say that. And I said, Riz? <laughs> And they said, yeah, you can't say that. It just, it doesn't work. And I was like, well, can you say it? And they were like, yeah, we can say it. Oh. And it was in that moment I realized, oh my goodness, they they view me and maybe everyone else does as old and not cool. And <sighs> I realized in that moment I, I'm past that you're n- not, and and, what and you even you talking about it, I'm thinking, wow, it it, it kind of took me a long time to realize I, I don't need to be talking like that, and so I'm wondering how many other instances where I've said something but like that. That was it. That was the moment I hit, huh? Yeah, I just Isn't realized funny? I am not young anymore, and it is obvious to everyone. That's yeah. what I thought. Isn't that funny? How like there's something that happens that you're like, mm-hmm. oh, that's it. Now I'm. I guess I'm not. Yeah. And they as were young unapo- as I thought yeah, I was. Totally. And they were unapologetic about it. It wasn't even so like. They're not even trying to be kind. No, or, they were just like, you can't say that. I'm like, oh, okay. I had, I'll share that in a little bit. I, I think I had one with Ruth, actually. Now that I think about it, I was like, okay. that's it. That was the moment I realized, okay, she sees me and probably everybody else in this house sees me as old now. Yeah. 100%. And that's, oh. Uh, Okay. I'm the mom, the 100% mom. You still with, have Riz? Uh, no, I have zero Riz. <laughs> I just found out. There's no Riz. All right. If you had enjoyed the conversation this morning, we'd love to know your moment. Was there a moment where you're like, oh, I'm not as young as I thought yeah. I was in their eyes anymore? Maybe you were put in your place or you realized <laughs> I'm just not young anymore. Yes. You can call or text us this morning and join the conversation around the breakfast table. The number is 1-800-909-KLRC. That's 800-909-5572. The KLRC Morning Show with Mark and Christy. 90.9 KLRC. We've been talking about that moment you realize everybody else in the room thinks you're old. Yeah. And you're not young anymore. No. It's whenever I threw out the word Riz, which means charisma and you were just trying to say something nice about your nephew in young people's terms i have my two nephews and my son there and some other adults i said maxi over here he's got some riz and he does he's got some charisma people are are drawn to him and uh, my other nephew was like you can't say that (laughs) say what riz it's like why not like it, it doesn't work you can't do that they can say it you yeah, they can say, say it. it. And I know there's a lot of other words. I don't know what, you know, they talk about like if you have cool clothes on, it's called uh-huh. drip. Okay, yeah. Be like, man, you got some uh-huh. cool drip. Like, check out the drip. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to say that. No, there's no way I could say drip. <sighs> but doesn't that make you feel old? You're like, wait a minute. I know, it does. I I it does. Have you ever had those moments yeah. like with your kids? I mean, <laughs> so, you've got teenagers yes. and young college folks. Um, just, this was probably a month or two ago. So, sweet Ruth, she's my high schooler. Mm -hmm. She was getting ready to go to work. I was like, hey, have a good day at work. And she's like, yep, got to get that bag, which means I got to go get, I got to go make some money. Did you know what she meant when she said I got to get that bag? Yes, because I am all hip, awesome (laughs) dad that I am, right? Right. So I was like, okay, that's pretty fun. So a little mental note. Yeah, so she's got to go get that bag, okay? 
Next time she was getting ready to go to work, I was like, hey, Ruth, have a good day going to get that bag. Stops dead in her tracks. <laughs> 18-year-old eye roll, 360 turn, you know, 180 degree turn. And she's like, you're banned from saying that. <laughs> you're banned. I'm like, wait a minute. You're not the boss of me. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, you cannot say that. Like, what do you mean I can't say that? She's like, no, you can't. That's not okay. <laughs> so what's the cutoff? Like, I don't know. When did we lose that privilege to even talk any young people's slang? Was it right. Is it when you get out of your 20s? Is it after age 25? It wasn't like I was misusing it. Like I didn't understand I the phrase. Yeah, you, you, you nailed it. You used Riz just as you should. Yeah. Max, he's got charisma. Yeah, he's got Riz. She was going to get that bag. She was going to work. Trying to make a little money. Nope. Man. Can't do it. I, I know someone from our listening family. Maybe you can help <laughs> us in this conversation. Have you discovered that you're yes. not young anymore? Mm-hmm. Have you been called out by the young people on your slang trying yeah. to hang? Or do you just not even try? I don't know. Just give up. What, at what point do you know when that is? Yeah. Because clearly neither of us know. Well, and I will say this. Like even not just using the words, but like in my whole, like what they think is funny, I don't think is funny. <laughs> so I do a lot of fake laughing around, <laughs> You're just like, this around my that, nephews. This is just, really not that funny. Yes. Yes. You can join the conversation this morning, 800-909-KLRC, call or text 800-909-5572. The KLRC Morning Show with Mark and Christy. 90.9 KLRC. So we talked a little bit about this yesterday. I keep thinking about this whole Olympic thing because mm-hmm. a lot of people are landing in different places on this. And, yeah. and that's OK, because I think it's a matter of conscience for some. So there's a lot of kind of grace and freedom in that. And it's still getting a lot of attention and social media and the news and all that kind of stuff. But uh, I, and I heard something from Brandt, who's on our sister station, Real FM. Uh, it was just a, I thought it was really good, wise perspective. Mm-hmm. He was talking about one that it's okay to acknowledge something may have been offensive. That's that's different than like having outrage and right, you know, bashing, or bashing. And- like just saying, "Hey, that was offensive," or that well, that didn't seem right. That yeah. wasn't wrong. Like. Be able to acknowledge that, not have yeah. to hide and just be like, hey, it was fine. No, you know, right. like, oh, nothing ever happened. Like, that hurt. Yeah. But that doesn't right. mean you. And that's true in relationships. Start spewing hate and. Right. All that's of that. just part yeah. of real life. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's kind of been this big push of like, hey, we're supposed to like join the picket lines. And people literally from like other religions and other faiths are like, Christians, where are you? Why aren't you joining us in the picket lines? And. There's a part of me kind of felt like, I don't know, is that what we're supposed to be doing? And it hit me yesterday. I was like, I'm not, I'm not supposed to be taking my cues from some other religion or somebody. I'm supposed to take my cues from Jesus. Mm. So Jesus is like, what, what would you say about situations like this? And I keep going back to things. I'm like, okay, well, if you just love the people that are easy to love or just love the people that you agree with or like, anybody can do that. Right. You want to look like me and you love your enemies mm-hmm. or you love people you disagree with or love people that might even hate you or mm-hmm. whatever it might be. And I was like, okay, that feels like a, a safe, soft place to land. It's not easy, but I can actually say, hey, in any situation, forget the Olympics, like, hey, this, this might've hurt. Like this wasn't okay. Uh, I, or I, I see this very differently than you do, but I don't have to throw stones at you i don't have to join a picket line i don't have to be evil yeah. towards you i can actually only because of jesus try to love you mm-hmm. maybe even bless you that's what bram was saying i was like oh okay yeah. i haven't been thinking that at all pray for them too yeah. and like uh, genuinely and yeah it's like god bless them show up in their lives show them who you are you know um one thing about it though that it just it's kind of a bummer is because it's kind of tainted it, the the Olympics kind of like an overshadowing there's this thing there right mm-hmm. and like how incredible could it have been if it it was just about we're all in this together this is unity this isn't that what the Olympics Olympics is supposed to be about 
peace, unity, countries coming together to just do something on a, a global level yeah. together. That's the kind of part that kind of bums me out about it. But, you know, and people have different opinions. I was just talking to someone the other day uh, after this happened, like, you know, I'm not watching the Olympics anymore. That's totally cool if you don't want to watch them. But I'm thinking about all those athletes who worked their tail off for years and because of what these what something quote, happened right? artists did that offended so many people like they're getting cheated and i don't i don't think that's fair either and and there are a lot of really cool christian if we want to you know it's not just all about being a christian either you know there are athletes there that don't know god and we need christian athletes there to tell them about god and they are there and they're doing devotionals online yeah like the you version people. app every day there's yeah. an athlete sharing on there like those that's what we want the yes and i want to support those athletes every single day there's a christian athlete getting online doing a devotional from the olympics i'm like wow that's incredible i'm gonna tune in to watch you bro mm-hmm. that's i mean that's how i feel mm-hmm. and i get it I, I get that we we you know we have some freedom to to have a matter of conscience totally and all this yeah but i think it's if anything it's become another opportunity for us to grow our own hearts for me it was one of those i was like okay mark is your heart really in the right place about this are you where is your heart at and does it are you taking your cues from jesus or from a bunch of posts or even somebody who doesn't even have the same world view yeah that you do? i mean i feel like the athletes are suffering more than anybody because of this you know anyway i that's just my opinion but <laughs> everyone's got one i so. think that's and it's And that's the part that's sad, and it's okay Mm -hmm. to be sad a little bit about that. The KLRC Morning Show with Mark and Christy. 90.9 KLRC. So, Mark, they're calling him the Clark Kent of the men's gymnastic team. Oh, he's the guy with the big glasses, the black glasses? Yeah, and he's a sharp-looking guy, Yeah, kind of unassuming. His name is Steven... Neta Rossick. I I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, okay. but um, basically, and these are his words. He says, "I'm a nerdy, you know." I think engineer. he's the guy. He can do a Rubik's cube like in less than ten seconds. That's it. Okay, that and guy. He's an engineer, and he has zoned in on his one thing for the gymnastics team, which is the pommel horse, and he has, you know. I don't even what the word perfected it basically. Yeah. Um, he was not that great at all at the other, you know, events. And a lot of those guys do multiple events, uh-huh. um, but he knows his place. He says, and basically this is one of the things I love about this guy is while everyone's doing all of their things, he is going around serving water. He's mm-hmm. cheering them on. He's checking on his teammates, asking them, what can I do for you? And, he knows the true nature of what being a teammate is all about. I love that. Yeah. And and I love this. It's talking about the whole, the competition came down to his event. And if he didn't nail it, then they would not be walking away with medals. Yeah. And so it came down to him. This is after he has been serving everybody else. And he gets on that pommel horse and he kills it. He he owned it. It wasn't this, yeah, this was the last round last person or something like that right that's exactly what it was okay and i mean no pressure right <laughs> right, right i mean oh, truly just, by the way we're not going to get a medal unless you nail this thing yeah i mean it, he had to hit it and and he did and um i just thought what a cool story and we haven't had our men's gymnastic team has not had a medal in At three or four olympics yeah yeah and and he just said you know unapologetically and unbashedly just in every way possible you know do your thing, be yourself, serve others. Mm. And that was pretty much one of the biggest secrets to, to his wow. success. There's so much about that I love. I love the picture of, hey, I don't always have to be on center stage with all yeah. the attention. I can be carrying water. And, and serving. Yeah. And the genuine nature of his heart. I mean, he's not looking for the, the limelight. He's mm-hmm. like, I've got my job here to do. And I want to take care of my teammates while we're doing this. And then ultimately, it was all a win. I love that. It everybody. makes me think about that picture that when, when Jesus says we're, we're all part of a body, right? Each of mm. us have a different part. Mm-hmm. It's really easy to want to be Simone Biles and just, I want to be able to do everything, mm-hmm. right? Or be the ones that get all the attention. But... 
but what if instead, like, oh, no, I've got one spot, I got one purpose yeah, for you. This is my role. This is this is your part. Mm-hmm. The whole thing isn't going to work mm-hmm. if uh, unless everybody does their part. Yeah. And all of us can serve for mm-hmm. sure. I love that. The KLRC Morning Show with Mark and Christy, ninety point nine KLRC. Happy birthday! This is just so exciting. Let's keep this party going. This is your birthday song. It isn't very long. Hey, happy birthday! Time for the Marketplace Grill Birthday Bash. It's Tuesday, July 30th. Let's celebrate some birthdays. And celebrating today, Keon Banks in Prairie Grove having a birthday, as well as Kay Johnson in Huntsville and Jeff Powell in Springdale. Happy birthday. And Mindy Littleton in Fayetteville. Also, happy birthday wishes today. McKenna Rose turns 14 in Hinesville. Christian Dellinger in Fayetteville is 6. And Matthias Schroger. And Springdale turns 11 years old today. Happy birthday, everybody. All right, so the randomizers picked out a winner for us, and I think we've got Christian on the line. Hello, sir. Christian, happy birthday. Happy birthday, man. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. Yeah, do you have any big plans today for your birthday? Well, my sister's going swimming, and I'm going to bowling. Oh, Oh, that sounds fun. You guys are going to have a big time today. Oh, man. Love it. Well, we're going to send you a gift certificate to celebrate with our friends at the Marketplace Grill. Sound good? Thank you very much.